broadcast, cinematograph films, and artistic work. Hmm? Okay, I said musical work, artistic work, cinematograph film, broadcast, and sound recordings. Five. These are the works that in Nigeria enjoy copyright protection. These are the works. Okay, sorry. This last one is six literary work. That's for books and your literatures. Literary works. Those are the six works that enjoy copyright protection. Now, what are the criteria that qualify a work to enjoy copyright protection in Nigeria? Some of us will walk up to me and say, but I have this idea. I have this idea and I want to protect or copyright my idea. The question is, is it possible to protect ideas? Is it possible? Does the law allow us to protect our ideas? Yes. I'm not hearing. Yes. The law does not allow us to protect ideas. That's one of the don'ts. You do not have copyright protection on ideas. You can have beautiful ideas, and two of you might be talking, and you express your ideas to me, you tell me this, I have this idea of writing this song, and you sing the song to me, you sing the song, and maybe because I have a sharp brain, and I copy the song inside my brain, then I go into a studio, or I write it down, what you have said to me, if I walk into the studio and record that same song you have sung to me, I own the copyright of the song, not you that told me the ideas. Are we following? Yes, so you might have a beautiful idea of, you might call somebody to say, okay, I just have this idea of I'm going to design a building, and these are the way the designs are going to be. And I go back and I put on paper the same design you have explained to me. You know, it's called architectural design. Once I design that, that design belongs to me that drew it, not you that told me about the beautiful idea. So under our law, and this is a universal law, there is no copyright in ideas. There is no copyright in concepts. You might say you have concept, it's just, it's just terminologies and all that. You might say you have this concept to build a particular stage and all that. As long as there is no fixation of your ideas, under our law, your idea must be expressed, whether in writing, or you record it. As long as that idea has not been expressed in writing, it sits within the realm of ideas, and that's the end. So number one, for a work to enjoy copyright protection, in this case, music, it must be of original character. That's the number one thing the law requires. What does it mean that it must be original character? Does it mean that if my boss here, if America now, composes a song and the song is out there, does it mean that if I pick that song and do the cover of the song, does that make that original? Hmm? If if a more now has a song out there and I do a cover of that song, of his original, is my own effort original? No. You are also wrong. You are also wrong. Now, if I pick a Fomorabe song and 
put an effort, though I'm doing the cover, but I change to some reasonable extent the character of the existing song. It means I didn't just dump what he has recorded. I put effort into changing the character of that song. The law says that you have created an original work. But you might be infringing on a face right because it may not have given you the right to do a cover. But the fact that you are infringing on a face right does not deny you the right to your new work. Check part one, section one of the Nigerian Copyright Act is there. So I'm not saying something that is not the law. The fact that you sang the song, Baby I Love You, and I take that same song, you know, to create something different, but it's your melody. It could be your melody, but I just put a different beat to it and go out there. I have created a new work. Why infringing on this work? The law will grant my own new work protection as it's granting a face own original work protection. So it is not left for a face to sue me for infringing on his work. So if you use my own work that I created from a face work, I can sue you if you can sue me. Is it? It's becoming confusing. No. Okay, good. But that's the law. So, one criteria for establishing that the work qualifies for copyright protection is to ensure that that work has an original character. And I'll explain what original character is. Number two, you know, is that the work is fixed. Number two, is that the work is fixed. Now, if you just sing to me, blah, 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 and you don't fix it, these days it's easier to fix. You can either fix by taking your phone and you record over your phone. That is fixation. Or you can get a pen and a paper and you write. That is also fixation. But if that work is not fixed, it does not qualify for copyright protection. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay. No, 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 you see, your work must not be in the professional format. There's nothing in the law that says it must be professionally recorded. As long as it has been recorded, whether by the rushes or in its raw state or whatever, you, may, you don't even need to master it for it to enjoy uh, copyright protection. Are we following? Good. So, now let's move forward. You understand that these are the basics for your work to be protected in Nigeria. With respect to music, now, music as it is, it's not about just what you hear. It's about what are the rights that are embedded in that work. Now, if you check the law, you have musical work and you have sound recording. Yeah. When a radio station or your phone sings a song, what you are actually hearing is the recording. But embedded in the recording is what we call the musical composition or the musical work. The musical work is the fulcrum upon which sound recording stands. You take away 
doing musical work, there is no sound recordings. Now, sound recordings could be said to be a derivative of musical work. Now, what is your musical work? Your musical work is simply your lyrics and your melody. That's your musical work. Your musical work is simply your lyrics and your melody. That will give you what is called musical composition or musical work. And it is protected under the Nigerian copyright law. So, when you get that, I'm going to draw a scenario. For every piece of recording you hear, whether via phone or on radio, they are likely to be between four and five interested parties in that recording. And when we say interested parties, they are simply referred to as either co-owners or authors in that piece of music. Now, this is A. He wrote the wordings of the song. You refer him to as the lyricist. Is that not so? This is B. He wrote the notes, the compositions, the melody, which is actually the song. He wrote the song. What you hear on radio is not really the song. It's a recording. But he wrote the song or the music to using his lyrics. Then this is the publisher. Now, this young man is unknown to law. He's unknown to law. The law does not know him. And I want you to listen carefully. He derives his power from these two guys. Without these two guys, he is nothing. And how does he get his power? Is by ensuring that these two guys assign their rights in their compositions to him. For what? For marketing. His job as a publisher is to ensure that he markets his songs either to a radio station or to a film house or to a record company. There are people whose job is to write production music for productions, film production, movie production, even production in events. So he acquires this right from these two. He becomes a copyright holder. These two are copyright owners. Get the distinction. These guys are copyright owners. He becomes a copyright holder. He is not an owner. He is holding their right in trust. He becomes a holder. Then he takes it to this guy. Who is the label? Because we don't, we don't have record companies anymore. The business of record companies is bigger than the business of the label. So, he is, whether the label or the record company, whichever one, he is the record company. He signs an agreement with this guy. This guy comes to him to say, I have this composition. And with the kind of artists you have on your label, this song might fit one of them. He says, okay. He gets across to this and says, there is this song. I want you to enter the studio and record it. Now, this guy has contracted this guy. This guy is the label. He is also unknown to law. The label is unknown to law. The artist is the king when it comes to recording. Why? Because the law says that the author of a sound recording, that the owner of a sound recording, according to our law section 51, says that the owner of a sound recording is the person in whose name the recording has been made. In whose name do you do a recording? We are all brilliant. So, this is the king in recording. So, this guy records the song, you know. Now, you have five of them. You have five interested parties. So, when someone comes to say, 
I have to acquire the right. You ask yourself, which right did you acquire? Did you go to these five personalities to get the right? And in the midst of all this, there is what is called the collective management system, which is what Kusum does. I will explain that later. Now, this guy enters into an agreement with me and transfers the label because the label has invested. He's a businessman. These two are business people. And that's why the law does not recognize them. The law does not really recognize the investors. It recognizes the creators. So what do these people do? They get right by way of contracts. And the law respects contracts. So this guy will say, okay, I'm going to spend money on you. Sometimes they give you advance and all that. He transfers his sound recording rights to the label. Just the same way the composers have transferred their musical work to the artist and to the publisher. So this young man becomes the copyright holder for the creative side, the structure. So the publisher is to the composer what the label is to the artist. Are we making sense? The publisher is to the composer what the, um, the label is to the artist. Bring it home again. Now, which rights will these guys have? You go to section 6 of the Copyright Act. It tells you the rights that these composers are to enjoy. And what are the rights? We said that copyright literally is the right to copy. But in pure definition, copyright is the exclusive or monopoly right that the law has granted to an owner of a work in which copyright subsists in order to either prevent others from exploiting the work without its authorization or to license or permit others to use the work with authorization. That is the legal definition of copyright. Now, copyright, it says it prevents. So, in law, we will say that copyright is actually a negative right. It's a negative right. It's not really a positive right because it prevents others from doing an act which if they do without the authorization of the owner could result as an infringement or what we call piracy. You know? Now, having said that, copyright is split into two. You have the economic rights and you have the moral rights. The economic rights are those rights that enables the owners or the holders of copyright to earn some form of remuneration from it, which you call royalties. The moral right does not give money to either the right holder or to the right owner. The moral right is simply a right of paternity or integrity. It's a right of reputation. It's a right that prevents you from putting someone's song we are talking about music now because we are in the music industry. That prevents you, say for example you want to do an advert, someone will tell you, don't use my music in a particular brand. Maybe because of a faith thing or where I'm coming from. I don't want to mention any brand. You say don't use my, don't put my music in a particular brand. Or don't use my music in a particular setting. That is moral right. Or, that when you use my music, apart from paying me, you must credit me the fact that I wrote the song. So, economic rights are transferable, but moral rights are not transferable. Even where I have transferred my economic rights, the law prevents me from transferring my moral rights. I might not be earning income from that work anymore. But any day that work is used, you must declare that I own the work, even if you are not paying me naira and cover. Now, what are these economic rights? 
If you go to section 6 of the Act, economic rights are for the composer's physical work, the right to copy, which is the right to reproduce, is the first. The reproduction rights is the first. Then you have the right to publish. And that's where the word publishing rights comes from. The right to perform. The right to perform. The right to communicate. The right to adapt. The right to modify. The right to broadcast. These are all the exclusive rights that the law has granted to a, an author of a musical work. Remember, the author of the musical work is the creator of either the lyrics or the melody. It can be two persons, it can also be one person. The lyricist and the composer can be one person. You understand? Just the same way the lyricist, composer and the artist can be one person. The label, the publisher can be one person. But even though it is one person that is these five persons, the law sees them as individual entities, as separate entities. So you go to you go to artist A, you get the right to a sound recording. And you said, because I got the right to a sound recording, whereas his composer name is Bayon, you have not gotten the one for musical work you will still infringe on copyright. So, those are the rights, exclusive rights the law has granted to the owners of a musical work. Then you come to the sound recording. The law also grants exclusive rights to the artist whose right has been transferred to the label. It also grants them the rights to reproduce the work, the rights to redistribute the work, the rights to perform the work, and all that. So those are the exclusive rights the law has granted to these guys. Now, how does this apply in the internet or digital age? In the past, if you want to reproduce a work, you go to a replicating plant. You go to a replicating plant and it is reproduced. And once a work is reproduced, mechanical rights is implicated. But in the digital age, how do we situate these exclusive rights in the music publishing, music publishing side and the label side? Is the fact that when you do a download, what a download means is that you are reproducing the work. A download involves two activities, distribution and reproduction. While the composer is in charge of the reproduction, the label is in charge of the distribution. That's where it meets. And all the economic rights was put there in order to help whoever the right owner is to earn some form of income, which we'll call royalties. That's the bottom line. At the end of the day, that when your work is exploited, that you earn income for those work. I will stop here for now and ask whether there are questions. Yes. And I'm done because I'm almost done. My time is. Yes. Yeah. Is there any other? My phone, I can, I can share this with you. Yeah, I'm basically trying to understand all you said about sound, recording, and writing. You know, I've had cases whereby the artist and the recording girl, you know, there seems to be issues as regards, um, as regards um, performing songs right after the contract must have expired. No, like, it's like a case study of, okay, I'm... Okay, 
talking about sound, right, and uh, uh, okay, no, talking about musical work. Yes. Okay, not say composition and recording. And recording, yeah. Yes. So this is a case study of a label and an artist. Okay. okay. A case study of whereby uh, a contract terminates. Yes. And the label is holding the access into ransom. Yes. That you can perform the body of works yes. that you made under the contract. The terms of the contract. Yes. So I've had cases like that. So I I want a bit of clarification. Okay. On that. Now, when you when you are writing a recording contract or a contract between the label and access, be careful what kind of contract you are signing. Are you signing a marketing contract? Are you signing a distribution contract? Or are you signing a recording slash publishing contract? When the label prevents an artist from doing an act which has been assigned to the label, if it still subsists in the contract, if there is a clause in the contract that says, even when the contract has expired, listen to this, a contract necessarily expiring does not mean that the right invested in the label has expired. So you need to know that. I might have a deal with the film for just two years, but with the body of works like you sell, I might say that, but I own the copyright to either the composition or the recording for a certain number of years. And meanwhile, copyright lasts for the life of the author plus 70 years. So if an author lives for 100 years, he continues to enjoy that until he's 100, and after he is gone for another 70 years. So please, if an artist, if a letter stops you from performing your work or his work, in short, it's his work, because the works have been transferred. As long as the term of the copyright is still alive, even though your contract term has expired, you, the artist, have no right to perform the work without the labor's permission. Do you want to say something, sir? Uh, do you have a, a particular case in point? I'm trying to understand the dynamics of um, an artist performing music uh, recorded on the Legal. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, um, you know, like, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's, um, I wouldn't say it's an existing issue, but in the course of, um, holding conversation amongst, um, ourselves, we discuss topics like this, and, and, and um, it's very, I think it, it's uh, very important to have a complete understanding about matters like this. Okay, that's my my quick question is uh, it's, it's a very extreme, very strange scenario. Okay. Strange in the sense that, like, what is going on now? There's a composer, there's a writer, there's a publisher, there's a label, right? And in all of these conversations, if the composer, if I compose a song, He's my publisher. Now he has to deal with a record label, right? That is using the material for the artist that is signed to perform, to record, perform the recording, right? Now, technically, the record label does not even own the music. They own the sound recording. So let me give you a practical example. Um, Mode 9 records, the song cry on the question mark. The sound recording, if we were to play, we were to use that version, sound recording, cry, you would the question mark would be an interested party. But if cry was composed, produced and performed by Mode 9, Cobams, it's difficult for me to see how question mark can say Mode 9 cannot perform cry, right? after a uh, contract has, has run out. So it's a very tricky, it's a very unusual situation. I've seen scenarios where, for example, uh, the members of a band, uh, Kula and Gang, right? Uh, JT Taylor comes into the band as a last official member. He's the lead singer, 
then he leaves the band and is performing 10, 20 years afterwards and is performing cool and began material in his personal shows, right? Now, I think that, that's more of, of, a, of a realistic scenario. So we're all more hits, we make songs as more hits, right? Now you're no longer a more hits member and you're doing shows, you're performing works from the more hits catalog, right? Uh, but the way collective management is structured, I might be wrong, I'm not a lawyer, but from practice, the way corporate, the way uh, collective management is structured, if J, uh, J, J, uh, 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 JT Taylor comes to Nigeria and performs at a co hotel, if he performs cool and dance music at a co hotel, ordinarily, once he submits his set list, and the failure of the license, the writer, composer, publishers of the music that he performed would get their due payment. So it's not actually in Kool and Ligan's favor. If, if Kool, the Kool brothers, were the writers, composers, for example, it's not actually in their favor if James, if James Tiller does not perform the song. Am I making sense? The more uh, JT Tiller performs the songs, the more revenue they get from, from their, their rights. If you say you should perform the song, then you, you are limiting your, your earning capacity. So it's not really a practical scenario where you know we recorded a song you were with us two years ago, now you cannot perform the song. I, I, I don't I don't think that's a practical scenario. Thank you. Okay. Now just to add to what uh, if it has said, always be mindful of the contracts you have signed. Always be mindful because like we broke down the two elements of works. We say there is the composition side and then the recording side. If as an artist and you're a composer too, you have assigned all these works, you've transferred it to a label for instance. That's when you have the kind of problem that maybe the extra condition that it is trying to mention. However, if the only side that was assigned was the recording side, you can and always perform your own musical work or your composition. And as a matter of fact, let me say this. Your composition will always remain. But you can have one million sound recordings from one composition. And for each time a new sound recording, for each time you perform a musical work, a new sound recording is created. If I have seen African Queen here now, and you record me singing African Queen. Only that light I have. The sound recording does not belong to tennis music. Only that one. The sound recording belongs to me. It can open the door. Exactly. Now, but the publisher still remains either to face or his publishing company. But because I said this thing, if you listen, that a sound recording is a derivative of a musical work. Sound recordings do not stand on their own. They exist because there is a musical work. You understand? So, uh, no, there is. But when I create it, when I create it, if two of us now, there is African Queen, and you see your own version of African Queen, I see my own version of African Queen. The composition still remains with two face. So if I earn money, two face will earn from me. If you earn money, two face will earn from you. But the sound recording, the moment you sing a new song, the, so the, the trigger part of this now is yes. my right to earn money from singing two faces song. Yes. So I can tell you that with no <laughs> that, that's performance conversation. Yeah. If you perform African Queen and it's recorded and it's exploited, you are the performer. Exactly. You have to be paid if it is commercially exploited. That's your performing right, your performance right. However, if you perform a composition that does not belong to you, you need to clear the right. So that you don't infringe. So that you don't because if you infringe what 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 they have a very simple scenario. You record a song like that I, was, I composed or the publisher. You 
If you don't make money from it, I don't bother you. The day I hear that you are number one on the chart, or that uh, Mike has signed you and given you a one million dollar advance, I show up. I go to my lawyers and say, I need two million. I took two million dollar settlement. No, say last, 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 last. Is that what I mean? Last, last. You understand? So, so that's basically how it works. So every time you you record the performance, there's copyright subsisting in the sound recording. But we have to not trace the origin of that sound recording to the composition, to the musical world. Is that clear? So please, a word of advice, because I'll run now. If you have a cover song you are doing, ensure that you clear those cover songs. You know, yes, creating a new song, a new work, which is sound recording, will not stop that from enjoying the rights. But the guy whose work, like they said, the moment money start ruling, I will sue you. You know, so ensure that you cover, whether it is cover or sampling, ensure that they are properly licensed from the original owner. Thank you very much. <laughs>